Nigeria has a paid maternity leave of 16 weeks at 100% of women's salary at the federal level. However, most private sector establishments give 12 weeks with 100% pay. Now let's compare with what other African countries offer. 22 other countries, including neighboring Benin, Togo, Ghana, and Cameroon, have a paid maternity leave of 14 weeks at 100% of the woman's salary. Outside Africa, Costa Rican women have four months maternity leave with 100% of their salary. In Sweden, maternal and paternal leave are given equal status. Welcome to the show. On this episode, we shall be discussing maternal and feminine issues. My name is Tabia Prinswell, and we're here as usual to walk the talk. We'll be right back. We're having the time of our lives. Welcome back to Walk the Talk. With me here is my lovely co-host, Eleni Brew. Thank you once again. Mm -hmm. Always happy to be a part of Walk the Talk. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> so before the break, I gave some facts about maternity leave across Africa and beyond. Basically, women's employment rights are protected during their leave, i.e. they're still eligible for pay rises, holidays, and can always return to work without fear. So we're going to be talking about a few of these issues, obviously. And uh, the first one is the fact that uh, around the world, there seems to be a consensus that... Um, men and women should share power and influence in society. Mm -hmm. So based on that consensus, why is it do you think that in Nigeria or in Africa generally, we're still you know, struggling to, to accept this oh. equality? You know, I think it also starts from the fact that people just don't want to understand mm. what it would be to be a pregnant woman. Mm. You know, they, some will want to see it as if it's an illness, like mm. an affliction almost. Mm. And some would want to make it seem as if it's really not that much of a big deal. Mm. Why are you claiming that you're tired or you need time off <laughs> yeah. or whatever? Or you need to rest. I know, mm. pushing you to the mm. limit. Here they tell you, all right, you're only entitled to this much leave. But mm. even with that, there would be some employers who would make you feel almost as if Bad. you were committing mm. a crime. Exactly. Yeah, an offense. Mm. That or that you're know, lazy. Why, mm. Exactly. Mm. Why would you want to take mm. time off? Almost you're, how dare you? You're a mm. machine, surely. Mm. Anti-paying you, just... you a salary. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm. Everywhere in the world, they're doing things to make sure that the employee is happy. Mm. Happiness is a really big deal yes. now in mm. Europe. I think they've gone through enough depression cases mm. and seen too many Suicide, people. Suicide, you know, exactly, all sorts. Yeah. Too many people visiting your mm. local yes, psychiatrist psycho yes, and yes. so on. Mm. Everyone's seeking mm. for help, you know, what all these kind of therapies. So it's for us here also to see that society is evolving. More and more women are working, be it in an office, running their own businesses, trying to, you know, just mm. be themselves. And these policies or a certain understanding has to come mm. into play. I mean, as you well know, maternal issues are not the only thing that women are concerned about, about yes, definitely. in this environment. Mm. Um, no, definitely. And I mean, I think what, what, what you said is very true because um, when you look at it from the point of view of the pursuit of happiness, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's in the American constitution. Exactly. Everyone is legally, spiritually, originally endowed with the right to want to be happy. You deserve to be happy, you know. And in this environment, as you said, it's a case whereby, you know, you're lucky to be happy. You know, happiness comes with money, age, or, you know, a host of factors that really should not come into play at all, especially when we talk about um, women. So I wanted us to also touch on the fact that, um, you know, when you mentioned, you know, um, more understanding for women, mm -hmm. shouldn't it come from women as well? I mean, women pushing, pushing <laughs> for these things. Which are we really? Do you think we're really doing that? It should, but sometimes you find that, uh, let's say, an office mm. environment, you would sometimes, mm. not always, obviously, because we're not going to, we're not here to stereotype. Yes, either. exactly. Mm. Sometimes you would find that the people who should understand yes, you are the least understanding. Exactly. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, I, I really agree with you. And I think there are also other, you know, silent policies that mm -hmm. affect, you know, women. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, the, the stereotype, you know, behind rape. Oh. They say, you know, it's because of the way she was dressed. Mm -hmm. 
It's just not. It's an ridiculous. Accident. The world has moved on mm. from this belief that your clothing, yeah. tight trousers, mm -hmm. a skirt, I don't know, a blouse that you may have unbuttoned right here, mm. that this meant an open invitation, almost a free for all. Mm. I mean, it's it's just, it's silly. Mm. There's really no other word. word. No, I it agree. is the person's. Um, I, I don't know. It should just be communication. Yeah. If it's a no, it's a no. Mm. There's there's nothing, mm. no way you can spin it. Mm. No means no. Fighting it off means mm. no. Pushing away means no. Trying to move away means mm. no. No. I mean, it's 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 fine if you know you have a dress code that states, okay, for example, you're working in I don't know, let's say a bank. Obviously, you don't want people coming in halter necks and spaghetti strap mm. dresses, mm -hmm. which is which makes sense. But then I feel that dress codes also, in a way, they kind of stereotype. Women and make mm -hmm. it seem as if you know people are unable to control their roving eyes oh, when they see urges. your body. Yeah, which which is just ridiculous. We're I not think. dealing with children. Exactly. The only children can literally I don't know. Or teenagers yeah, who get excited and, get and yeah. excited and you want to mm. lunch for the chocolate. You're mm. supposed to be able, be to, able control. to control. Yeah, yourself. exactly. And that is part of the problems here: mm. the lack of control, and mm. then on the other part, the lack of enough self-esteem to mm. be able to carry things through. through yeah. How do you get policies put into place mm. to protect yourself yeah. against rape? Because we're talking about adults. Well, even sexual harassment in the exactly. workplace. I don't, I don't even know if there's anything. Because most, in many offices, you know, they have um, some form of, they have, you know, bylaws or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then even when you complain, very often you find that the woman would be seen as the guilty party, so to speak. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I find it really hard to, mm. to understand also because in a work environment, mm. everybody is there, you all have your tasks. Mm. Where is it written that you invading my personal space? Exactly, personal space. Or, you know, overstepping mm. your boundaries. I have, I'm just supposed to accept it yes. because... Because what? I'm a woman. Yeah, because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. That's literally the only, the only reason. I believe that things should actually mm. be uh, done to have real protection for mm. women. And we all know where and who the people are who are meant to protect mm. our interests. No, definitely. As citizens. Definitely. I think, you know, one day we'll have maybe someone from the house, if any of you ladies are watching, <laughs> open invitation. We'd love to, you know, discuss a lot of these issues with you because it's, um, I mean, I, th I think it's time for us to begin to talk about ways of protecting ourselves as women because no one is going to do it for us. Time for a commercial break. But when we come back, We'll meet our guests for today, so don't go away. We're having the time of our lives. Welcome back. One of our guests today is a woman known in the fight for civil rights and particularly the development of women in Africa. Both her parents made the ultimate sacrifice to enable democracy in Nigeria. Please welcome Hafsat Abiola Kostil to the you. program. <laughs> Our other guest, Dr. Akudo Ainyao Ikemba, is the Chief Executive Officer and founder of Friends Africa, the Pan-African organization that fights AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. In 2012, she was honored as a young global leader. The announcement was made by the World Economic Forum. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's lovely it's pleasure to have you here. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're talking about maternal and feminine issues. So the first question I want to ask you both is basically that, you know, if motherhood is so central to the African definition of womanhood, why is it still so difficult to provide, you know, optimum and adequate health care for women generally? I think um, in, in our case uh, here in Nigeria and in many African countries, we haven't quite prioritized social mm. issues mm. Um, and we haven't put health care at the forefront of mm. our political agenda. And I think that if it was there, then we would make it a priority. And then secondly, we don't have enough women in leadership positions. Mm. And I think the more we have women leading Africa's mm. institutions, mm. the more services um, and social amenities we'll have for women. Mm. But I actually think also that we shouldn't um, beat ourselves up. Because mm. if you look if you take a long view, you'll actually see that we've made a huge amount of progress. Mm. So in Ogun State, I'm special advisor to the governor on MDGs. That's the Millennium Development Goals, mm. which is an international compact initiated mm. by the United Nations. And in 2000, when we started the MDG march to mm. lift the poorest people all around the world, 
the numbers of women dying at childbirth in Nigeria, during childbirth in Nigeria was about 1,000 women per every 100,000 births. Mm -hmm. Now the number is down to 350 per every 100,000 births. We're still not at the target that has been set by the UN, which mm -hmm. is 250 mm -hmm. per every 100,000, but you can see that we've made significant progress. Mm -hmm. And if you actually consider that in Nigeria, the whole effort around MDG and attaining the targets and goals was not really launched until 2007 when the money from the debt relief was able to enter into the social sector mm -hmm. and fund the efforts, mm -hmm. then you can see that in just about, what, six, seven years, mm -hmm. we've made remarkable progress. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's more to be done, but we can see that we're in the right direction. Dr. Akudo, um, the next question we want to ask really is, how do we, you know, make this, this whole idea of inclusive growth, you know, how do, we, how do we as women, first of all, impact the lives of other women mm. and then also the wider society, you know, so that it's like it's a sort of relationship where we're feeding off of each other. And we're carrying you know, everyone mm, along as a society, society and a nation. Mm. Um, I think that the African woman generally um, has been held back by a number mm. of issues. Um, and I also think that as a result of all the issues that are holding us back, mm. it's hard to launch forward to free ourselves mm. from so many other issues, whether it's in healthcare, nutrition, um, whatever it is, there are many things holding back the African woman. Mm. Um, and so fundamentally, I think that there's some crucial conversations that need to be had. I think that we have a lot of culture, uh, cultural practices that hold back African women. I think there are, to just put it simply, a number of crimes committed against African women mm -hmm. that are veiled with culture and mm -hmm. honor yeah. that we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So I think it really starts with a very honest dialogue about teasing out what's culture and what's crime. Mm. Actually, I think what you said is extremely important, Akudo, because I think that when sometimes we look at uh, the women in the national assembly and we say, why are they not doing more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very difficult for them to come into the front line and say they're championing an issue where they're not sure that they have the backing of the generality of women right. or even the generality of society. Oh, I so I think if we start from the premise that we need to have some crucial conversations, you can imagine a scenario where we're having these important conversations and as they hear, as those women and progressive men hear mm -hmm. from the generality of the yes. public mm -hmm. that we are concerned about FGM, mm -hmm. female genital mutilation, mm -hmm. We're concerned about early child marriage. Absolutely. You know, certain issues, they would have the courage to now step forward. Mm -hmm. But I think if we have an honest conversation about some of the issues Hafsat mentioned, mm -hmm. whether it's FGM or it's mm -hmm. early child marriage mm -hmm. or it's some of the horrible mm -hmm. widowhood practices mm -hmm. yes. that women yes. are yes. subjected yes. to mm -hmm. as a result mm -hmm. of having lost yeah. their husbands, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, literally being tortured by mm -hmm. other women yeah. and, and the rest of the community. Often yes, mm -hmm. um, unless we have a conversation to say, okay, for people to come out and say, you know, because the first thing that people will say it's our culture, it's been done for mm -hmm. ages, that's how we are. That's mm -hmm. the first kind of pushback. Mm -hmm. But then when people now come out and say, but it hurts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we were to say now to women out there, mm -hmm. for example, what can each woman do? Mm -hmm. We always hear about how, you know, a woman talking, a woman telling things to others will have a ripple effect. Yes, yeah. As a nation, how can we help to move forward, our continent and so on? So much has been said. Africa is in the limelight mm. these days. And we all are passionate about these things. Mm. How do we propel ourselves, make our women also feel that they have their role to play and mm. they must, they have to mm. rise up to the challenge, irrespective of what anyone Think says, or says or thinks mm. about them? Mm. What can we do? I think we have to first get clear that, you know, the African woman has been told for so long to just stay at home. Mm -hmm. And we have to tell them it's time to come out. Mm. This was my mom's message to me. It was the message she told market women mm. during the June 12 crisis. Mm. She said, if you just stay at home looking after the children and you don't go out into the world to make sure your ch that the world they'll come into is ready for mm. them, mm -hmm. you've betrayed your children. And I'll never mm. forget this. 
because yeah. Nigeria needs us now. Yeah. Each and, and every I one think of this is something mm -hmm. Nigerian women can understand. Mm -hmm. Because if you say like to Nigerian women, come out for yourselves, they will mm -hmm. never come. Mm -hmm. But let them look around them. Mm -hmm. Look at our poor women on the... You know, you wanted to talk earlier about maternity leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not interested in talking about this. This is important. But when the woman farmer is having a baby and within two weeks she's getting back on the farm, I want to first look at how are we going to take care of our poor people? 70% mm -hmm. of Nigerians are living under $2 a day. Yeah, mm -hmm. They're not talking about any maternity leave. There's no possibility mm -hmm. of maternity leave. Yeah. Maternity leave. Mm -hmm. Let's take the women in the National Assembly and take them to the villages. Let them see, let mm -hmm. them hear the stories, mm -hmm. how it is to give birth with only a torchlight and the midwife who doesn't even know to wash her hands and use hot water. You know, let them see what is happening in our communities. And then when they go back to the National Assembly, believe you me, they will speak with such a voice that the whole world will hear. I don't doubt it. So we, they're what we have right now. Let's work with them. And hopefully in time, we will have more women representing us. We mm -hmm. must try for equity in power, in all positions, mm. at local government level, state level, Indeed. and mm. national mm. level. Mm. Mm. Very, Very true. true. I couldn't mm. agree more. Mm. I mean, I think she's hit it right on the head. She's mm. spot on. You know, they say that you know, when you invest in women, women will invest in their communities. Yeah, so true. it's time for us to, to get on with that journey. And women need to say enough is enough. Mm. Yes. Women need to start standing up for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when it hurts, when it brings suffering, we need to speak up Be vocal. Mm -hmm. and not just sit back and say, okay, it's the culture, mm -hmm. it's the way things are. We need to question aspects of the culture that are actually crime. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming on the show today. It's been amazing, very inspiring and enlightening. So thanks again. Thank and you. it's always wonderful yes. to have people who know how to walk the talk. Yes. <laughs> We've been very happy yes. chatting with you. Definitely. <laughs> so let's visit our sponsors. And when we get back, Chigo will do her thing. We'll be right back. In the time of our lives. In the time of our lives. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, baby boys and baby girls, this year girl again, Che God. So give you my own this thing about the this thing that we're discussing in the this thing, you understand? You know, we're talking about women's issues, say no, how we as women relate to each other. And it's a very bad this thing. I've noticed, say no, that we, you know, not very encouragement, you know, of each other. You know, if you see a woman walking down the street and she look really good, do you look at her and say, look at this thing, no wage? Or do you say to yourself, oh, wow, my sister look good. Think to yourself, have you complimented a woman lately? You know, what are you doing to help, you know, each other? We complain about government do this, government do that. But now, look within you, you know, within yourself, ask yourself, what have I done to move this market forward? This is about market, you know, this is a market. Help yourself, you know, to go further and further in your life. And as women, if we have this thing on lockdown, you know, that means that our future, everybody future, gonna be better. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so this one, I'm just telling you people, as women, help yourself. Help your market. Look around you. Ask yourself, what I'm going to do to move this market forward? Don't just sit there, you know. And for some of you women who know you just think, you know, that you're not going to do anything for yourself. Don't be a waste. She go and tell you. You have to what? Help yourself. I.E. Help your market. Don't just sit down waiting for your dream to fall on your laps, you know. Pursue it. Pursue the market. What is your talent, you know? Do you have one? Look for it. Ask God, oh, why did you keep me here, you know? He can't even tell you what you're going to do. So that your talent, you know, will not be a waste. And your life will not be in vain. This chick will give you just a word of, you know, advising this ten from my bag of this thing. I have many things, you know, as I'm going to say, and that I want to say. But it's a special, you know, just a special collaboration of my world, you know, onto your world so that you can get a softer, sweeter message from your world and all. Check all. I'm just here, you know, as a fellow woman to tell my fellow women out there that, you know, this market is big enough for all of us. Don't be jealous, you know. 
don't hinder another person's progress, but it's better if you help to push them forward. So all of us can be at floods on the river of life. You get it? Don't try to drown another person's dream. But seeing if you help it to live, then you also can also live. So let me just tell you, as I'm not coming down quietly, and no, I'm coming down, coming down, it's a very you know, simple decision. Just help each other's market. If you are selling orange, I will exercise some tomato. Tell other people about her tomato. And she can tell others about the orange. So that at some point, you come together and make a fruit salad. You understand? Don't let this thing pass you by. Help yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Help your sister so that we can all help the market and our life will not be vain. This year, God, she go. I see you around the corners. Bye. The time of our lives. As the saying goes, when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. And as Margaret Thatcher said, any woman who understands the problems of running a home will be nearer to understanding the problems of running a country. Those are the words I leave you with as we come to the end of today's episode. See you next time and remember, keep your heels as high as your hopes and walk the talk. That's running in heels towards your destiny. Take care.